What's good, guys? Today is Monday, January the 16th, 2023. It's a rainy day in Kentucky. This video will be regarding the Zakira Kemp case. And specifically, I wanted to get into a few minor things. First and foremost, um, a news agency, an NBC affiliate out of Texas, has finally ran this story. And I wanted to show you guys the video that they did on it. Now, was it the best video? No. Um, there's a lot of things that they didn't get right, pronunciations and that sort of thing. But on the positive side, it has at least gotten to one news agency out of Texas. So we've got to keep pushing this case. So let me cut to the video that they did on this. A Colleen mother is demanding answers after her daughter went to Maryland to hang out with her friends in July of 2022, but never came home. Officers say she was killed in a car accident. But questions surrounding that accident are now causing a lot of conversation on social media. Now the mother wants the Charles County Sheriff's Office in Maryland to tell her what really happened. Six News reporter Adrienne Alexander talked to her today. She joins us now to share her concerns. This is amazing, Adriana. Yeah, it's a lot going on, Chris and Lindsay. Jolanda Kemp's daughter, Zakira Kemp, left out of Colleen for a road trip with two friends to hang over Maryland and got there July 4th. A few days after arriving, her mother wasn't able to see Zakira's location on her phone. When she called the friend her daughter took the road trip with, she was told her daughter died in a car crash. Jolanda told me she's received inconsistent information on how her daughter died. The two friends her daughter was traveling with told Jolanda her daughter was drunk driving and hit a tree, and that's what caused her death. But when Jolanda received the autopsy report, it revealed that Zakia had no alcohol in her system and she was actually in the back seat. She also told me she was denied the opportunity to see her daughter's body after the crash, and the dental records at the crash site were never confirmed to be her daughter's. She's now pleading with the Charles County Sheriff's Office in Maryland to give her the final crash report so she can know exactly what happened to her daughter and get some sort of closure. Give me some answers. <laughs> Tell me what really happened to my child. Why is there not a 911 call? Why every angle that I tried to come to y'all, y'all trying to make me feel like it's a conspiracy. And I never said a conspiracy. I said inconsistencies. Now I reached out to the Charles County Sheriff's Office and they were not able to provide any information today. At 6, we'll discuss what was reported on the autopsy and also a first draft of the police report and hear Kemp's theory on where she believes her daughter could be. Wow. Back to you guys. Yeah, this is like an unsolved mystery, but it also gets weirder because nobody will give any answers and then you go immediately go, why not? Right, because if there was an accident, yes. there would be a crash report and it's all very routine. Right. So. All right, thank you, Adriana. And I know you'll continue to look into that case now the other thing I wanted to speak about was I got several questions in the comments regarding um, the 911 call and also ambulance transport and I wanted to show you guys the articles plural that I have found in regards to this case and even one coming from a press release from the Charles County Sheriff's Department itself so let's look at these um, articles. Okay, the first one I'm going to show you comes from the Southern Maryland Chronicle. Came out on July the 8th of 2022, and it says it was wrote by the Charles County Sheriff's Office, which I thought was really interesting. Police investigating crash that kills one, injures two. Now, pay attention to the small details, guys. On July the 8th at 2.18 a.m., officers responded to the 11,300 block of Maryland Point Road in Nanjamoy for the report of a single car crash. A preliminary investigation revealed the driver of a vehicle was traveling on Maryland Point Road when the vehicle left the roadway and struck a tree, catching fire. Two occupants were able to get out of the car, but a third person was pronounced deceased on the scene. That person has not been positively identified. The two occupants, a 20-year-old male from Hyattsville and a 21-year-old female from Texas, 
were transported to a hospital with serious injuries. Anyone who may have witnessed the crash or who has information relating to it is asked to contact Corporal R. Brooks in the Traffic Operations Unit at 301-932-3056. The investigation is ongoing. Now, nowhere in that article does it say anything about a 911 call or anything like that. It just says officers responded to the 11,300 block of Maryland Point Road for a report of a single car crash. Doesn't say anything about a 911 call, okay? Now, this article is coming from the Southern Maryland News website, and it's titled Charles Sheriff's Office Investigating Fatal July the 8th Crash. And it's actually wrote by their staff, uh, someone named Daryl Kinsey Jr. on July the 11th of 2022. The Charles County Sheriff's Office Traffic Operations Unit is investigating a crash on Maryland Point Road that killed one and seriously injured two others on July the 8th. Officers were called just after 2 a.m. to the 11,300 block of Maryland Point Road in Nanjamoy for a report of a single car wreck according to a release from the Sheriff's Office. A preliminary investigation revealed the vehicle was traveling on Maryland Point Road when it left the roadway and caught fire after striking a tree. Two of the occupants, a 21-year-old female from Texas and a 20-year-old male from Hyattsville, were transported to a local hospital with serious injuries. A third passenger of the vehicle, who has yet to be publicly identified, was pronounced dead at the scene. An investigation into the crash is still ongoing. Anyone who may have witnessed the crash or has any information relating to the incident is asked to, again, contact Corporal R. Brooks. All right? Now, here's the Charles County Sheriff's Office actual press release. Traffic Operations Unit Investigating Fatal Car Crash on Maryland Point Road, wrote on July the 8th. On July the 8th, at 2.18 a.m., officers responded to the 11,300 block of Maryland Point Road in Nanjamoy for the report of a single car crash. A preliminary investigation revealed the driver of the vehicle was traveling on Maryland Point Road when the vehicle left the road and struck a tree catching fire. Two occupants were able to get out of the car, but a third person was pronounced deceased on the scene. That person has not been positively identified. The two occupants, a 20-year-old male from Hyattsville and a 21-year-old female from Texas, were transported to a hospital with serious injuries. Anyone who may have witnessed the crash or have information relating to it is asked to, again, contact Corporal R. Brooks. The investigation is ongoing. This one is coming from the Daily Voice. Police investigating crash that kills one, hospitalized two in Charles County. It's wrote by Zach Falia on July the 8th in the afternoon at 5.05 p.m. I don't know why that little pop-up there. One person was killed and two others hospitalized with serious injuries after an early morning crash and car fire in Maryland, authorities said. Shortly after 2.15 a.m. on Friday, July the 8th, officers from the Charles County Sheriff's Office responded to the 11,300 block of Maryland Point Road in Nanjamoy, where there was a reported single car crash. Upon arrival, a spokesperson for the Sheriff's Office said that the officers reported that two occupants of the vehicle were able to exit the car, though a third was pronounced dead at the scene. The preliminary investigation determined that the driver of the vehicle was traveling on Maryland Point Road when the vehicle left the roadway, struck a tree, catching fire. A 20-year-old man from Hyattsville and a 21-year-old woman from Texas were both transported to area hospitals for treatment of, quote, serious injuries, end quote. No details have been provided about the fatal victim. No names or additional information were released about the three crash victims, which remains under investigation. And guess what? Anyone with information or who may have witnessed the crash has been asked to contact Car Corporal Brooks again. Now, I want you to pay attention to the wording here. A 20-year-old man from Hyattsville and a 21-year-old woman from Texas 
were both transported to area hospitals for treatment of serious injuries. Okay. Now, who do you think transported these two people who were just involved in a car accident where there's a fatality and a car fire? It would be nobody other than the ambulance. So where is the ambulance run for this particular car crash? Number one, that's my first question. Where is the ambulance run? Because that's going to have a lot of information. I'm going to tell you, I tried to do a FOIA request regarding the ambulance run, regarding the 911 call. Um, you cannot get past the HIPAA request form. So if someone says that they did a FOIA request for either of those two items and they don't have a signature from Miss Jolanda Kemp, they're not being truthful with you guys, okay? Because there's no way around that. They are not going to release that information to just any and everybody, okay? That has to be signed for by Miss Jolanda Kemp, who would be Zakira Kemp's next of kin. So I was trying to keep this video fairly short in length and get out the most information that I could. So number one, we found out that there is a Texas NBC affiliate that has put out a story regarding Zakira Kemp um, actually last week. Now their follow-up story that they said they were going to do, I can't find it. So I'm like, what happened to your follow-up story? Uh, because believe me, I was looking for it because I was like really interested to get this information. I can't find it. And I'm like, did you guys get ahead of yourself and think you were going to get that information and didn't and then just said, eh, I'm not going to even bring it back up. Not sure what happened with that. Um, we know that there was at least a press release from the actual sheriff's department. Um, several local uh, media reported about this car accident. And we have several articles that are talking about two people being transported to the hospital with serious injuries. So that tells you right there that that was an ambulance transport. There's no way around that. Um, you're not going to see a sheriff's deputy putting someone who is severely injured into their patrol car and transporting them to the hospital. It's not going to happen, guys. It's just not. Um, so I just wanted to bring you these facts regarding this case. And I have more information, but it just didn't really fit in this video. So I'm going to try to break it down into a separate video. Um, but regardless, uh, I appreciate you guys for listening. Let's continue to try to push this story out there. It is definitely worth um, everyone taking a look at. This needs to have a spotlight put on it because there is something wrong in Charles County. Um, there needs to be some accountability somewhere in that county. And um, it's really up to us to push this out there. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a great night.